Hello there, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages. My name is Doggo33, and welcome back to Hearts of Iron 4, The New Order, Last Days of Europe. In the last video, we beat back the um, People's Revolutionary Council, and we really started solidifying our control over the former lands of the Siberian Black Army. And now we are finally doing our last war to reunify uh, the former Central Siberian Republic against Nova, Nova Sibirsk, Sibirsk. I don't know how to pronounce it, and it won't matter that much soon. In fact, I'll just move in and take the capital now, and that might just knock him out of the war. If not, well, it's not the end of the world. Um, we could probably just, uh, I'll move in and take, uh, Barnell. There goes, um, the war against Dietzlin. That's a shame. Um. Well, there might be an independent Denmark, perhaps. Um. There, these guys are fucked. Poland is fucked. Ukraine is probably gonna die. Um, they might if they submit, they might be okay. I don't know how that exactly works. So I've yet to play Germany, so I don't really know their mechanics. Uh, just as I said, Denmark is fucked. For a shitty flag too. That is not a nice flag. I don't like that. Not one bit. Mm -hmm. Like, and it's not just because it's a swastika. I mean, that doesn't help, but it's also just not very creative. It's not very iconic. I mean, the Nordic flags... Say what you will, but they're iconic. If you see them, you know, that's... Okay, that's the Danish flag, or... That's... Swedish? No, wait, that that was the Norwegian flag, not the Danish. You know, they're not... Maybe, maybe not the most iconic, but... If you see the flag, you might not know what country it is. I mean, I do because I'm a flag nerd, and I literally, literally play games where I stare at maps all day. So I know this, but... Um... Yeah, what was it, what was my point? You know it's, you know, it's, you know it's a Danish flag. It's iconic. It's been there for hundreds of years. I think it's the oldest flag. Right now, like, in existence, that's still being used, at least. I think. I might be wrong about that, but... I mean, what... I, maybe I'm wrong, I don't know, but... It's iconic, it's what I'm... That's what I'm I'm trying to say. Well, you know, it's just a fucking swastika. It's not very creative. I mean, Germany, Germany at least did it first. I mean, this isn't the best flag either, to be fair. Not just because of what hatred it represents, just because, um... It's kind of just a mediocre flag. Oh! The recent fall of Nova Sibirsk and the retreat of enemy forces now across the frontiers of a battlefield have left us, left us in control of the now idle Novo, Novo Sibirsk aircraft plant. Towering and dormant, the factory was constructed before the Great Patriotic War and has manufactured vehicles capable of flight for her administrator ever since. Now the flight plant under our control, we will soon have access to a fresh arsenal of aircraft fit for any purpose for our armies. Mortar engines roar, and squadrons of planes may fly in the Siberian skies, bearing our insignia. To first dominate the plains and wastes of central Siberia by land, we must tame the wild airs of our broken Russia. With this plan, this feature may be ours for centuries to come. Hopefully. Is that enough? Not even a foul. I didn't... I forgot to click the last thing. My bad. Shostakovich and the Humanist Association have come far. From a fringe artistic political movement, 
in an obscure city in central Siberia, he now helms what was likely to be the best hope for a democratic Russia. The government which he presided over has transformed life in Tomsk, ensuring that basic needs become not only a necessity but also a right. People come to Tomsk in search of something better, a shining lantern in the darkness that pervades Russia. Yet there is much more to be done. The humanists might have listened the city of Tomsk into the heart of central Siberia, but enemies still lie in wait. The anarchists and the rebels ge general still rule the lands of the south, each flaunting their rights as a successor to the central Siberian Republic. Shostakovich cannot allow this insolence to stand long. After all, the idea of a Russia uh, of a uh, of the Commonwealth remains. A state ruled by Russians not based on class or ideological differences, but of the human bond of a human condition. Beautiful. So we got a lot of stuff we got to catch up on. Okay. First. We can ask for uh, support of the lower house, apparently. This is all new, I'm noticing. We can integrate Novus Sibirsk, which is probably a good idea, so let's do that. Top of that, we can scavenge for loot. Fuck yeah, we're going to do that. We can build up the Nova Sibirsk air bases and trial these. Well, we can't trial them right now, but we can later. In time, we'll be able to do that. And let's get more guns going. More men with more guns. Okay, let's see. War is hell. Okay, now the, um... The West Russians are probably going to win here. Oh, no. Kostane is probably going to beat Novopolska. Me. Poland might just become lost right here. Along with the actual Poland. Mm -hmm. Decisions available. Well, we have a decent army going for us. We just gotta figure out where we should put it. Or the Commonwealth. There we go. Okay. Hmm. Um, we have a labor tree. It looks like we have a different path. Tree. Mm -hmm. Potential friends where we improve trade relations, potential enemies through Cathay, Central Asian overtures. Towards our destiny. Okay, I think we get some new focuses, so let's take a look at that. Maybe. Actually, that doesn't look like it. So, military laws. Basic training. Integrated military. You'd say we got, like, basic military. Stuff like that. Um, I don't know. National focus. Let's... Hmm. Okay, so we got a lot of stuff going now. Um... I'm trying to figure out. Let's work on our army right now. The Common Core reforms. During the reunification wars, our military wasn't as powerful as our neighbors. The fight against the separatists and the rogue generals was made difficult by our military. It's been a rough start for our Republican army, but one that must be addressed if we are to defend the territory we've conquered and continue expanding. Our military deficiencies are many, and there isn't a simple fix that will rectify it. 
The Marshal as a whole must be strengthened. Marshal Shaposhnikov has put forward a set of recommendations on which all salons have agreed upon. Such improvements will be expensive and time consuming, but necessary if we wish to one day reunify Russia. No, we might as well just go ahead and uh, form the Commonwealth of Siberia. We shall enter the regional stage, granting us access to greater diplomatic options and the economy system. Tomsk unifies central Siberia. In the region of chaos that is typical for the Russian warlord states, a beacon of freedom and democracy may have appeared. The old government of the Central Siberian Republic, forced to retreat to the city of Tomsk after its collapse, has recently issued an announcement declaring that the region is now back under one state their own. Little is known about the political factions that once dominated this republic's politics, but it appears that the group known as the Humanist has secured this government, formed, founded by well-known composer Dmitry Shostakovich, and continued by his protege Mieslav Weinberg, is a group of artists that wish for a humane and democratic republic which protects its citizens. That its exact dream has apparently been achieved. And okay, it looks like do we not... Interactions was moved to decisions. Okay. It's a little lame, but okay. That's fine. That's okay. We'll work with that. What the fuck is... Warlord recruitment has been removed because its prerequisites are no longer fulfilled. Ooh. The Republic has survived and is now thriving under the guidance of Pasternak's constitution. However, the great poet's final gift is not universally loved, especially among recaptured territories. Independent politicians struggle to win power outside of the great salons. Many citizens in the provinces believe that the system is meant to cynically maintain the dominance of Tom's elite at the expense of everyone else. We must remain vigilant and show that our four vanguard political associations are true to their ideals and welcoming of any newcomer. Van Creduso could result in rising cynicism or in the rise of independent politicians. Left unchecked, both issues could cause the failure of our revolutionary diplomatic experiment. Mm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Huh. And then we have, um, engine development. The old Central Siberian Republic has been reestablished. As Russia emerges out from its slumber, the basis of a true modern nation-state can be built. The great question, however, what type of society should a rep republic shape up to be? More importantly, should each salon be true to its own vision? Each salon has different ideas about developing the army, the political system, and the economy. The citizens expect every salon to follow up on their electoral promises. In the event of a salon losing power to another salon, the citizens would be disappointed to see the new government merely maintain the previous administration's policies. While well, the cost of scrapping months or years of reforms in one area could be great, the cost of cynically failing to follow one's ideals could be even greater. In case of economy is disorganized, we are currently under a political crisis, and we have a basic army. Okay. Hmm. We're still in integrating Novosibirsk. Oh, regional development. Okay. With the reunification of our region, we now hold vast lands and millions of people within our borders. And a truly formidable force lies at our disposal. However, our current progress is not the end-all be-all. Our, our infrastructure remains incomplete, our people remain impoverished, and we remain behind the Reich in many aspects. In order to forge our state into a true, respectable power, we must embark upon an ambitious program of development and progress, lest our competitors outplay us and cast us down, cast down our aspirations to reunite the motherland. Okay. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Courage political fault. Fault. Let's see. Um. 
professionalism, political interference, that's not the best. So there's, you know, nukes. Which we could probably get working on now if we wanted to. I don't know, let's worry about the core. We got a new research slot, that's pretty neat. Let's get working on infantry weapon improvements 5. We still got some low manpower. We got a new flag, Commonwealth of Siberia. We gotta figure out where we wanted to put these troops. Um, let's go with Buryatia for now. That's a flying. Still 1964. We got some stuff we need to work on. I think now we're gonna get the uh, new focuses. Here we go. Oh. The Central Siberian Republic was back from the brink. Every last one of the misguided separatists had been crushed, and then the subsequent Siberian workers' revolt sadly had to be crushed as well. The workers are returning to their factories, and the citizens of the other Central Siberian factions are not yet in open revolt, but tensions are palpably high. As of now, the rather overextended Republic is still functional. Gradual progress is being made with the Central Siberian plan, though the industrialization project will of course have to be expanded to the entirety of a region. The government has at least a semblance of legitimacy and a loose authority over its people, but will have to trend very, very carefully if it wants to earn the trust of its people and develop into a fully-fledged nation-state, not to mention reunify the entirety of Russia. In the cafes, homes, bars, and factories, the people question openly to each other, whether Pasternak's great constitution and our salons are truly as idealistic and for this people as they claim to be. There's a great risk of our citizens becoming cynics, whose apathy could single-handedly be our republic's downfall. Some may become so angry that they run for office outside of our salon system, threatening the balance and stability of our government currently enjoys. For starters, developing the economy, maintaining political stability, and improving our army are imperative for our administration's success. Our idealism can only take us so far. This great Republican experiment is in a survival but challenging position. We must do what it takes to keep it alive. That being said, if we utterly sacrifice our ideals, will any of our work have been worth it? Hmm. Well, the Republic carries on. Still got Dimitri. As well as the Fall Symphonies, the new life of Dmitry E. Dmitrievic Shastakovich started with a single sound, the chime of a telegram, punctured with send stops with a little piece of paper brought to him, but grim news, brief but grim news, Leningrad had fallen to the hands of the Nazis. He was attending a recital in Tomsk in honor of an old friend. With his home lost and with no transport mm -hmm. westwards, Shastakovich became stuck in the city, earning his living as a composer of the eccentric repute of eccentric repute of the Central Siberian Republic. Thus began the Largissimo of Shostakovich's life, a slow and ponderous walk across the years of the Republic, with almost nothing notable occurring in between. He turned to his work, composing pieces that subtly criticized the Republic, and integrated himself into the artistic scene of Tomsk. When he found himself at the forefront of a humanist association, he had reached the Andina and Dianti, of the movement, his movement, a stable forward pace. However, such a steady tempo would not last for forward. Rebellions shattered the old republic, with Novus Abrus tearing itself away over the issue of conscription. It opened to a cha chaotic second act. The anarchist war rose in Kenst, and the generals mutinied in Krasnoyarsk. The denouement rested in Tomsk, where the ideals of the republic survived and thrived. The artistic movement of a city, now salons, thrived. The land of central Siberia are to witness a new, republic, a pl new play fold out. With his triumph in the elections of the Republic, Shostakovich now stands conductive. The world awaits to see if his victory is merely an overture or the end of a beautiful coda. It's nice. Mm -hmm. But there's still more to be done. She does still at war with Amor. We'll see how that works. Germany, storm control over Central Europe. Yikes. We'll see what end up, ends up happening with um, the me the uh, father, Mr. Men.
But right now we have our Commonwealth. We're in a good position. I'm happy where we're at, honestly. Well, here goes Comey. Oh, um, Kostin.1.D. Okay. We have general strikes now. So whatever that was supposed to be, it probably is not good. Hmm. Well, we're still going to expand the core out. What's what's happening? Bratislava burns, and with it, the last bastion of a brighter future. There's no hope left for the people of Slovakia. Damn. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's see the new Danish. It's a Reich Commissariat now. Um, I guess I like the flag better. Kind of stylish. How about the Dutch flag? Oh! Okay! Kostin.3.T! Either Nova Sibirsk is going to become a demilitarized road zone, Krasnoyars will become a demilitarized zone, or Tomsk will become a demilitarized zone. Let's see. Um, Krasnoyarsk apparently is a demilitarized zone for some reason. Oh god, we have no political power. Holy shit. Um, that's not good. We are losing a lot. We're overextended. Medium taxation apparently is not a... The biggest advantage. Okay, we're expanding the core. Let's see what ends up uh, working there. Um, expanding politics, a different path. Maybe we should hold off on this for now and get working on, I guess, this. Mm -hmm. Okay, we'll get in some political power here and then lose it at the same time. All right, let's go. Uh, expanding politics, reduce the administrative strain in our state. The Republic stands triumphantly over its former territories. In this hour of victory, the public has perhaps never been more politically divided, or divided politically. Emboldened by the years of independence, separatists, former Siloviki, mutineers of Krasnoyarsk, and anarchists of the FBA all mill around, uncertain of the future and wary of our political system. Our innovative mm -hmm. constitution was limited in some aspects, with its strict emphasis on the four salons. At the same time, Pasternak's great constitution powers us mm -hmm. to experiment, to try new things, to welcome new ways of doing things. If our great republic project is to endure, we must dare to dream even bigger, and inspire ever greater amounts of people to believe in our ideals. The republic must endure. Whether it will or not, that's a question to be seen. I mean, okay, we get war support, but we lose stability, and I don't even know why the fuck this is happening. We'll get Kustin.6.t coming up, though, which is really nice. Oh, Shaposhnikov stacked our papers on the desk and leaned back. He'd actually managed to get all four of his salons on board with his reforms somehow. As was a norm of few back room meetings, cups of tea, and IOUs were necessary to unite each salon under his ideals for the military, but at the very least, Shaposhnikov acknowledges that they all had reasonably good military plans, regardless of their ideological differences. The behind of his scenes work was behind him now, but ahead was the actual task of serious military reform. Shaposhnikov was aware of the importance of his job as a core Republican army, which served as a foundation and bulwark of the Republic's defense. Neither he nor the government could afford to let pesky squabbles hinder the modernization and reform of the military, lest everything he and the people of Central Siberia had worked for would be lost. I mean, at least we can agree on something.
Excuse me? Okay, I don't even know what the fuck is happening and I'm getting this shit. Siberian Workers Federation. Who the fuck are you? Arise ye workers from your slumber. What? Okay, um, Vitaly Kostin. Vitaly Kostin was, until recently, a nobody. He was born in 1938 in a small settlement in the Altai. From a young age, quickly became involved in mining. After a brief period of serving with the Central Siberian Republic's army, when he was first-hand witness of its unraveling and final collapse, he found himself in Nova Sibirsk, poised to continue his career. Kostin lacked the adhesion others had to his the regime's beliefs, mm -hmm. and despite the rumors of connections with the underground socialist populist Nordic group, he became an exemplary worker. The mine miner was of no particular relevance to the politics of Russian warlords until the revolt began. Sent determined to make a stand against the resurgent authorities in central Siberia, the working class of the cities and villages took up arms against their perceived oppressors. News of checkpoints after checkpoints being taken over by ragtag militias arrived through the rules, rulers of the region, seemed effective control seemed to be slipping away once again. The head of this grand uprising was Kostin, who did not lose the chance to guide the proletariat to victory. And as much as the once normal citizen had become the figurehead of the liberation movement, he is not its king, president, or supreme leader. Former libertarian socialism has emerged in the liberated... That's fucking anarchist again. God damn it. There's no sole leader in such system. All Vitaly Kostin wants is for his people to be free and equal. If revolution is what it will take, all-out revolution it will be. God fucking... How was I supposed to know this would even fucking happen? Open there are guys! Sparking up all over the fucking place. What the fuck... is this? These fucking anarchist LARPers... Can't run a fucking state, but they think they can do a mass revolt. What's gonna happen after your revolt, buddy? Huh? Stupid fucking LARPers. God damn it. Ah, oh, Jesus fuck. What is even... F I guess I know what that event chain was about now. That's nice to know. Okay, we're taking Kimarovo. Okay, take a Chinks back. Fucking move! Fuck! Okay, attack there. We lost the basin. Great. Okay, if we take Krasnoyarsk, hopefully this these fucking edgy anarchists will be done. Right? No more LARPing around as little soldiers. That's a black arm. There we go. Jesus. What the fuck was even that? What? Ah. Mm -hmm. oh. Jesus. Um. So is that going to be a normal thing? Will I be able to understand what's going to be happening next time? Or is that just going to be something I figure out? Hmm? Alright, we still need the PP to integrate Novosibirsk, but... Sibirsk. Apparently I should have waited, waited to unify before I did that, but, um... I guess there's only one way to figure that out. Okay. Okay. I'm calm. I'm gonna calm down. I don't even mind if that, that that happened necessarily. I just wish I was. Yeah, Poland is lost once more. I just wish I was alerted ahead of time. You know. Okay, Dreschler wins in Oslin. Doctor D is one. We'll see what ends up happening. Will he submit? 
We'll have to wait and see. Um, hmm. Okay, expanding politics. It'll reduce the administration uh, administrative strain, so we'll hopefully at least stop losing political power. Yeah, there we go. Expanding politics. Um. Okay, let's work on the People Springs, because I think that's part of it. Right? Okay, the People's Spring. It's not beautiful. Is it not beautiful what we have achieved? A government beholden to the people in support of a common worker, managing to carve out a place in central Siberia. Years ago, such a thing would have been treated as no more than mere fantasy. A pipe dream, dreamt up in the ivory towers of Tomsk by the intellectuals with knowledge of the real world. Yet here we are today, able to proudly say that we are the citizens of a free republic in Russia. Many are our citizens bled for this achievement, and many more will surely die in the coming wars to reunify, reunite Russia. However, at least for a moment, our people are witnessing a Russian spring blooming in Siberia. Okay, real quick. Uh, let's... At least try the secessionists. Get working on that. Bring Nova Suburbs back in the su into the fold. Um, shit! That was weird. That was a weird episode. But we made good progress nonetheless, and I'm proud of that. So, I'm still going to have to go to here, though. Thank you for watching, as always, guys. If you like this video, go ahead and leave a like. If not, feel free to dislike. If you want to see more of my content, if you should go ahead and hit the subscribe button. For more uploads every weekday, as, ever, as well as every Saturday. If you have any comments, feedback, concerns, anything of the sort, go ahead and leave it in the comment section below. I read all comments I get. Appreciate any all feedback you have for me. Did I say that oh, twice? Um, if you want to see more of my content, subscribe button. It's a place to do it. Uploads every weekday, as well as every Saturday for random stuff. If you want to send a few bucks more my way, I have a Patreon. You can check that out. So I have a Discord if you want to check that out. Uh, you can join up, chat, and we can just play games and have a fun old time in general. Also, finally, have a Twitch channel if you want to check that out. Uh, I record series like these live, so if you want to be a part of that, go and check it out and link below. That's about it, folks. My name has been Dogbot33. Thank you as always for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.